Hello everyone. Yes, it's the return of me trying to sing for some reason. Anyway, hey guys, this is Matt the Speed Star, aka the Game Rebel here, ready to run through the next part of Metroid Other M Redemption. Last time, Ridley. This time, we're chasing someone. And he went in here. Because that's the only way we can actually go, and... Sabotage! Yep, he went in there. And, guess what? He broke the terminal. Any objections, Adam? That's the best bloody part of the whole game! Yeah! Samus is sass! But not only that, she, uh, allowed herself to unlock her space jump, which works very similar to how the screw attack works in the Prime games, in which you don't just... you're not just able to move around anywhere you want. You can jump higher once, but afterwards, you can continue to do spin jumps as long as you're not going any higher, so you can cover a really long distance if you're good at space jumping. And at the same time, like with the Speed Burst and Shine Spark, the screw attack. So now we are Sonic in a power suit. And this is the space jump and screw attack. Screw attack, of course, very powerful. Not actually as powerful in this game, surprisingly. Still able to kill off pretty much, uh, most, uh, enemies. Heck, even those Giga Frogs. One hit from the screw attack, and dead. So let's get in here, because apparently our uh, friend, as, uh, I'm saying sarcastically, came down here into a new area that we have never explored yet which will become important later and there was a save thing here so I actually could have I could have come here could have come here this could actually save quite a bit of time Okay, so there was a thing from uh, last time that I actually did neglect to bring up, but I'm going to do that after this, because uh, important stuff coming up, and this is going to take a good long time. So, uh, time for me to go hush hush. Anyway, this place is never real, I, I never did the uh, map thing, but this place is known as the Bioweapon Research Center. Pretty much the final uh, area of the game, pretty much. I'll just leave it at that. Okay, now time for Hush Hush. not a member of the Galactic Federation. I came here because I intercepted the distress calls. I'm a bounty hunter. And I know that something is after you. Please, you must believe me. Thank you. I'm Samus Aaron. What's your name?
Madeline Bergman. Behind closed doors, the Galactic Federation was trying to create a special forces unit composed of bioweapons. In order to make it happen, they were attempting to create an organization modeled after the space pirates, with the Zabesians at the center. But because of a certain presence, the life forms became ferocious. We were no longer able to control them. By a certain presence, she must have meant Ridley. So you sent out the distress signal, even though it endangered your life? I had to. I felt there was a real danger here, that if left as is, the Zabesians would continue to evolve and resurrect as real space pirates. If that danger was real, then the risk of withholding information to protect herself was too great, clearly. And yet, wasn't she the one who set the facility's system to self-destruct? In silence, I praised her courage and sense of responsibility. At the same time, her argument had some holes. Say that the Zabesians, under Ridley's influence, became super aggressive. Would that really lead to the resurrection of the space pirates? Without a malicious force to lead them down that path, wouldn't they continue to merely follow their instincts, ultimately becoming no more than a swarm of feral creatures? Regardless, it was clear that the Galactic Federation was ready to consign their enormous mistake to oblivion. And that's why they sent a deleter. And as for Madeline and others who knew the secret? But wait, there was another inconsistency in her story. Why go to such lengths at all? With just a small flexing of the Galactic Federation's military force, they should have been able to destroy a facility of this scope with ease. So why didn't they? Actually, there was an even more dangerous plan. Come with me. What? That's not possible. The Metroids were terminated along with Zebis. Yes, and the last of them, the baby, met its end above my head. You're Samus Aran, right? The one who annihilated the space pirates? Metroid remnants were attached to your suit when you returned from Zebus. They were reproduced from a piece of cell structure salvaged by the Federation, and they are in this facility. Ridley in the same way. At first, no one thought that the creature was Ridley. They didn't think it had potential as a bioweapon at all. They raised it like a pet, calling it Little Birdie. Until one day, it attacked one of the researchers and got away. Ridley had played dead and lured the scientist into his cage. What was left? It was a horrible sight. But in order to control Metroids, you need Mother Brain's telepathy. You don't. You didn't recreate a Mother Brain clone, did you? It's artificial intelligence. We developed an AI program that would reproduce Mother Brain's thought processes. We called it MB. But it was just a program. It wasn't the mother herself. MB evolved as it communicated with the Metroids. It appears as though it began to become self-aware, much like the original mother brain. 
It's really quite remarkable. That's when it became clear to me just why Madeline was so afraid of the Space Pirate's resurrection. It wasn't that her story had holes in it. Through the holes were glimpses of the danger that was right before her eyes. If everything she said was true... Where are the Metroids and MB? They're in an area called Sector Zero. It's a unit that doesn't appear in any of our map data. It's a place like Toria, where we propagate and raise Metroids. I began to see what the worst case scenario would look like. The ultimate weapon, the Metroid, would be mass produced. And as soon as an AI that could control them was developed, the plan to create a special forces unit modeled after the space pirates was replaced. But as the AI called MB spun out of control, the facility became a place much like the planet Sevis. If the situation were left alone, galactic society would be put in peril. Even the ringleaders of the operation wanted to avoid that, but they still wanted the Metroids. And that's why... They decided to capture the Metroids contained in Sector Zero and delete the rest of the facility, including the Space Pirates, Ridley, and everyone who knew the secret. But before the ringleaders could act, Adam appeared. Adam might have known or suspected the truth about the facility from the beginning. Regardless, since the ringleaders were members of the Galactic Federation, they could no longer act recklessly. And so a deleter was installed as a member of Adam's team to destroy evidence and plan each subsequent move. But having me added on as a member must have disrupted the Galactic Federation's plans. Madeline, thanks for telling me all this. I've got to destroy the Metroids and MB in Sector Zero. You have to remain hidden. Don't worry. The Galactic Federation CO who's here now will help you. You're safe. Does that CO happen to be... Commander Adam Malkovich? The real leader of this operation is Commander Malkovich. I can't believe that he's here. Stay here until I return. That ain't good. But yeah, that was a very lengthy cutscene. In fact, I think that's like around 10 minutes. So that's like half my video right there. Anyway, our next objective get out of here, get to Sector 2, and right down there, Sector 0. So, after I leave Sector 1, I'm going to cut to where the uh, closest area is that leads to Sector 2. And that's actually where that uh, dead Giga Frog is. I'm probably going to go around there. I don't know if I'm going to get a start on it. I Again, I don't know about a lot of things. And I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to get through all this. Because uh, my main goal is to try and get at least the main part of the game completed... By part 20. 
Also, we've got uh, these uh, key hunters, which are now really powerful and a pretty big threat. Had we not have our screw attack, which will now kill them in one hit. In fact, most things will die in one hit to our screw attack. Okay, so, first order of business. That thing I accidentally uh, left out from the uh, previous part. One of the big criticisms, of course, and, and this is kind of explaining why there's a big criticism about the uh, Ridley cutscene and Samus' uh, panic attack. A lot of that is due to the fact that the official Metroid manga, and yes, it is official, the Metroid manga was never actually released in the West. In fact, the manga, of course, is uh, probably one of the reasons why the uh, game was more well-received in Japan, aside from the uh, main stuff. Because it was never released out in the West, most people didn't really know about the fact that Samus kind of got a panic attack over Ridley, and uh, yeah, I, I left that out by accident, I'm sorry. But that would lead to one of the big criticisms with the uh, Ridley cutscene. Now before I can talk, he's back! This stupid Bardogian is back, and this time he's dead! Because now I can actually kill him! Ow! Ooh, and I hit him with a screw attack! No, I want to wait until I can get a chance to not do that. No, I want... When I got a chance, I'm going to super missile him. But anyway, this time... He's dead. Come on. And that should do it. And for real, you are dead. Not big surprise. And with that, we now get another upgrade, so we only have two left in the game. But, returning from Metroid Prime 2, the Seeker Missiles. So with the Seeker Missiles, if there are multiple targets, just charge up like you would a Super Missile, and then fire. You'll always shoot five missiles with this, but you can lock on to up to five targets. Really helpful, and we are going to kind of need to do this. So anyway, that's pretty much it for Sector 1. That's why I didn't uh, cut anything out. Now I'm going to cut things out, and I'll see you in that room with the Giga Frog. I'll make sure not to grab any items on the way, because uh, I'll save that for backtracking. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Hey, buddy. Bye, buddy. Yeah. One screw attack! Enough to kill a Gigafrog. So I figured I'd, uh, quickly, uh, cut back in here because there is one other thing, or probably one or two other things that I would like to maybe quickly bring up. And this is actually about the whole, uh, thing involving what our friend Madeline was talking about. And that is what she talked about with the fact that there were Metroid cells, or, well, pieces of the uh, baby Metroid on Samus's body, or power suit. And not just that, there was a lot of stuff on Samus's uh, power suit when she returned from Zebus, which the Galactic Federation, well, they uh, harvested that from her power suit. By the way, that's how you do the Seeker Missile thing. Now, I would probably just end it here, but you know what? I want to go a bit further. I want to make this a longer video because I want to talk. But anyways, you come in here. Oh boy! We now have Gravity Alteration. 
Now, I'm sure some people would argue, why, why is Samus not activate her gravity suit? Well, I don't see this as like a big issue right now, and Samus activates them when absolutely necessary. So I'm guessing she doesn't see this as necessary, but to be honest, I don't mind this because I like a bit of a challenge. I wasn't trying to charge one up, but uh, get this missile tank while uh, I'm on the way. So, as you heard, there are Metroids here. They are in Sector Zero. The Metroids were supposed to be extinct. They're not. They're not because those who are performing illegal activities within the Galactic Federation wanted the Metroids. And because of that, by the way, we're now in heavy gravity, so I cannot use my missiles. I can only use my beam. I can still use my screw attack to a degree, but I can only really use my screw attack and my beams. And this is, like, pretty uh, quick to get through, but other than that, I also noticed that enemies don't really get affected by this. just Samus, which is weird. But anyway, not only does this explain a lot of the dangers and why the battleship was still intact... But, it also, uh, like, it helps cement stuff for the plot of this game, but it also cements stuff for Fusion as well. Because it shows that the Galactic Federation didn't just, you know, actually... They didn't just do the whole Metroid thing here. No, they did it in other places too, such as the Biological Space Labs in Fusion. That's why there were Metroids there, because they got all that Metroid stuff from Samus' power suit. It's because of that scene that really helps cement this game's place in the Metroid timeline. And I like that, because it shows that they really did want to really tie up as many loose ends as they could with this game. Apparently, that thing knows how to kick. I did not know about that. Well, whatever. It dead now. Oh, crap. Oh, boy. I don't like that part because it's really hard to do that uh, space jump there. But, but anyway, I like the challenge here with the uh, high gravity really makes you have to work on your timing. Um, there is something up there, but we can't get that yet. Anyway, after we go through here, I think there's a save room. I think. And then after I do that, I'll be done with this. But yeah, it's the fact that it's all the stuff with uh, the Metroids, Ridley, them showing up in the uh, bottle ship and in the uh, biological space labs. Yeah. All that was because of the Galactic Federation and wanting the Metroids, and... yeah. Ah, good, there is a save room. Which means I can stop here, and this has been going on for quite some time. We're almost at Sector Zero. There's two items we're not going to be able to get, and there's still a bunch of other items that I can get here. But I'm going to save that for next time, because we got quite a lot to do coming up. Yes, more delicious map data. Nom 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 nom. So, I think I've uh, made a point here. Because of the whole thing with the Galactic Federation wanting the Metroids, as well as other things, and because of the whole space pirate thing, I mean, like, they harvested a lot more than just Metroid remnants from Samus's power suit. No, they harvested lots more. Ridley, Space Pirates, Mother Brain, all the stuff that splattered onto Samus' suit was harvested. And an easy way to tell was because that uh, quarantine officer that uh, was talking with us at the beginning of the game, when you see glasses flash enough that uh, it covers their entire eyes, 
You know that person's been up to something. Watching Pokemon XY taught me that. Anyway, I think I made my point. Because of all that, this game, regardless what anyone says, deserves a place in the canonical Metroid timeline and has evidence to back up having that place. And I like that. So, next time on Metroid Other M Redemption, Sector Zero. We're almost there. But we've got to tie up some loose ends that are before it and then see about those Metroids. So, until next time, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you wish to follow along this and my other Let's Plays, please consider subscribing. If any concerns come up, I'll let you guys know my Twitter and additional info in the lower left box in the video and down in the description below. This has been Matt the Speed Star, aka The Game Rebel, and I'll see you guys next time when we run through the next part of Metroid Other Rebel.